right. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, yeah, so as uh, Brittany said, I'm a colleague of, of Brittany just down the hall. Um, I run the Developer Experience Design Lab, where we run studies of developers and try to build new programming tools. Um, so imagine that you're debugging an input issue. So you're you're looking at some snake game. Um, you're trying to get the snake to move. You're you're entering the up, down, left, right keys, but it doesn't seem to be working just right. So what do what do you do? Um, one thing you might try is just to add some breakpoints. So try to find the input handlers for all these these keyboard events and see what happens when they're invoked. Um, but this isn't the only thing you might do. A different way to try to debug this would just be to start at the end to start at the output, um, go to find the statement that is generating the output, and then try to follow the, the data flow backwards um, to see sort of at what point the, the data flow doesn't look quite right. Um, and there's all sorts of other approaches you might imagine, and uh, lots of variations on, on these, these approaches. But uh, often in practice, this ends up being stack overflow, of course. But how do you choose the right approach? Um, what I want to talk to you today about is a way that you can try to grow your toolbox in a way that is more deliberate rather than accidental. And I'd like to try to give you a tool that tries to rescue yourself from your own worst self. Um, and I wanna to talk to you about a version of you that is doing interesting work and solving difficult problems whose colleagues come to them uh, because they just have a different way of looking at things. Um, and the secret sauce I'm gonna to try to give you today is this idea of a programming strategy. Um, a programming strategy is just a, a procedure for accomplishing a programming task. I mean, it offers this language for shaping how software engineering effort happens. Um, most, of, most of the programming is all about solving problems. So you want to fix some issue. Um, and the way you do that is you, you know, first find the defect, and uh, then you try to, to trace the output backwards to find the defect. And to trace the output backwards, you need to find where the output is first generated. So whenever you're going through one of these, these problems, you always have these, these nested problems that, that you're trying to solve. And, Psychologists have long looked at how humans solve problems. And a big part of this is just trial and error. So problem solving is often like a maze where humans are just trying to choose which path to follow and people end up backtracking a lot when choices just don't work out as, as you expect. Um, so programming strategy just gives you a way to try to navigate this, this maze more effectively. Um, and there's evidence that over time, experienced developers learn how to use strategies that, that help them to work more effectively. Um, so how can you learn another developer's strategy? Um, so you might just ask somebody to write it down and, and try to follow it. Um, but we found that this isn't quite as easy as it seems. So as a developer, you have a tendency to just read the whole strategy all at once rather than going through it all uh, step by step. And then as you try to use it, you can lose track of where you are in that strategy and you know, forget like what you're trying to do next and have to start over from the beginning. Or you might try to follow up for a while, get confused, and then just go back to doing whatever was the approach you'd otherwise be doing before. Um, and this makes sense. Um, whenever you're solving a problem, there's a lot of what's called cognitive load. There's a lot of things you're trying to pay attention to. I um, mean, it's hard to pay attention both to the problem and learning something new at the same time. Um, so habit is really strong, and it, it ends up being very hard to overcome. Um, so to help address this, we invented a, a way to try to learn a strategy. Um, we built what we call a, a strategy tracker. Um, and the idea is it lets you go step by step through the strategy and just helps you keep track of, of where you are in the strategy um, and just take notes um, as you're working. Um, and we even invented this, this more formal notation for describing these strategies. Um, which then let us build an interpreter that helps the strategy tracker keep track of the control flow to determine what step to, to show to the developer next. And we could even do things like help the developer try to remember what to do later by having them write things down, which we just assign into a variable. And then we can sort of reference that variable later in, in the strategy when the developer needs to, to go back to, to, to something later in the strategy. Um, so then using this notation, if you want to write a, a detailed strategy that explains how to debug by doing backwards data flow search, you, you can do that in, in our notation. Um, so we found that with all of this, um, we were able to successfully enable a developer to, to switch strategies. Um, and for this defect, 
um, switching to a backwards search um, helped them to work better. Um, and in fact, it help them to make more progress than they would have otherwise been able to make because that strategy was a better fit for the problem that they were trying to solve. Um, but where can you find strategies? Um, can we just go off and ask experienced developers to start writing them? Um, so it's possible that these strategies might be what's called tacit, that developers just learn the new strategy but never even realize that they're following it. And because it's tacit, isn't something that they could try to explicitly write down and explain. Um, so are they tested? Um, so again, we, we try to find out and we just asked developers to, to write down some strategies for us. Um, and we found that they largely could. Um, we found that you know, developers are able to write all sorts of strategies for all sorts of problems, um, but it's often hard to write good strategies um, because it's often hard to, to generalize the strategy, um, to go through the process of testing it to make sure it works on all the different variants of the, the problem that you might have, and to try to take the perspective a strategy user that might not have exactly the expertise that you have and be able to explain things at the right level of detail that somebody else could, could follow. Um, but we found that you know, developers for these, these really good strategies can try to use them to, to solve a programming problem. Um, they just often have the same sorts of, of challenges that the people have in, in writing them, um, where you know, there might be missing steps, there might be ambiguity, um, it might not tell you how to use all these, these tools. Um, so the main takeaway of, of both of these findings is that in order to, to build this process to successfully to share strategies, it's really important to have a feedback process. Or you want somebody to first try to write it, and then you want a revision process for people using it to give comments and for the person writing it to make it better so that over time, you can address all these, these issues in, in strategies. Um, a few more cautionary notes about choosing strategies. Um, as you might imagine, the, the type of code that you're looking at has a big impact on the strategy you might choose. Um, so if you're working in code that interacts closely with the library, you're over three times more likely to go find some docs and uh, less likely to, to build a diagram to try to understand what's going on, which, which all makes sense. Um, but how you're feeling can also have a really profound impact on how you decide to, to approach a problem. Um, so if you're feeling stressed or nervous, you're over twice as likely to add print statements and over five times less likely to try to spend the time to read all the code nearby, which just might be too complicated. Um, if you're feeling sad or depressed, you're over 10 times less likely to try to experiment by just editing the code, which is a lot of speculative hoping that you, know, you randomly get lucky and, and get what you want. And um, if you're feeling uh, very excited and enthusiastic, you're over twice as likely to, to ask for help from a colleague. Um, so how can you be proud of the way you work and, and work in a way that is more deliberate rather than accidental? Um, one key takeaway is, is that there's always, almost always a different strategy that you might use to try to tackle a problem. Just being aware of this and explicitly considering the strategy that might work the best for your situation in this moment um, is an example of what's called metacognition. Um, some studies have also demonstrated that, that self-regulation, the, the process of monitoring your progress and your use of time are also associated with greater problem solving success. Um, you can also just find better strategies. So there's, there's resources out there today um, that try to document some of the ways that you can solve problems and just knowing more of these, these strategies can help you to be more effective. Um, but you can also try to like, be more of an active participant to, to share your own strategies and help curate strategies that, that work for your own organization. Um, so we've been building this tool called How to Dev that can act as a repository for, for strategies like this. Um, and finally, it's important to, to think about how your own affect is approaching your, your approach, like um, taking a minute to de-stress or help yourself feel better can really have an impact on how you solve problems. Um, if you really want to learn more about strategies, um, we're going to be running these, these programming strategies mentoring sessions. So um, reach out to us for that. Um, so with that, I'm uh, here for any questions anybody might have. Fantastic, super. Thank you so much for an enlightening talk on programming strategies that I wish I had heard 
a really long time ago. Um, or at least the, I think the, the connections in particular, right, are interesting between like our, our mental state, our, our, our being and how we do things and ways that we can think about navigating that as well. So really interesting connections here. I do have one question that I see. And again, audience, please feel free to bring the questions on into Slack. Uh, but I see one, Rebecca wants to know, uh, do you know that they really follow a particular strategy that they write down? Or is it more nuanced? Uh, thinking about the fact that in different contexts, experts might vary their strategy slightly depending on the task or, or the, the, the context or domain. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, a lot of these, these strategies have a lot of nuance and, and complexity. So when we asked somebody to write it down, it, it's probably like, you know, a high level sketch of how they see themselves as solving this problem. And it might not have every sort of complication or variant of, of the problem. So I, I, I think definitely trying to, to grow these strategies over time through feedback to flesh out more, more of these, these corner cases is definitely the way to go since you're, you're probably not going to write the perfect strategy the, the first time. <laughs> 